Have you ever tried using an AI as your WordPress AI builder? If you have, you'll know the pain. One day it gives you procedural code, the next day it gives you object-oriented code. And sometimes it follows coding standards, sometimes it doesn't. It's like having a different developer every time you open up your terminal. So here's the plan. I'm going to show you a setup that actually works. It's dead simple, but it will change everything for your WordPress projects. And it all starts with simple markdown files. Today, the new kid on the block is Claude Code, which is basically AI for CLI, or artificial intelligence for the command line. Now, it's fairly easy to install, and it's recommended you use Node 18 or higher. Now, if you're not sure if you're set up for modern WordPress development, you can check out this link up here, and that should get you started. So I'm using NVM to switch Node versions. So running NVM list shows that I'm running on version 22. So I'm good to go. Next, you'll need to install Claude code from the command line. Now you can do that by visiting anthropic.com forward slash Claude hyphen code, and you can copy the npm installer command for Claude code, which is npm install hyphen g at anthropic hyphen ai forward slash Claude hyphen code. Now, once you've got it installed, you can run Claude from the command line, and that will start the program. When you first open Claude, you'll first need to choose the mode you want. Now I'm going to just go with the dark mode. So from there, you can either subscribe, which is what I do, or you can run your account through the console, which basically charges you based on your API usage. And again, when you first open Claude, you'll need to authorize it with your account. Now I'm on the pro plan. I'm already logged into my Claude account, so I just need to authorize it. So once that's done, you can go back to your terminal and hit enter and you'll see some security information about using Claude with your code. Next, you'll go through the settings. I'm just going to go with the recommended settings, but you can change this at any time. So once you're through that, you're good to go. Now, once it's installed, you can initialize it in any folder and it generates a markdown file. Now, this is actually really useful, especially if you're anything like me. So I'm a developer. Sometimes I'm working in a plugin. Sometimes I'm working deep in a theme and sometimes I'm juggling the two together. So having a markdown file that gives the AI specific context right in that folder that you're working in, for me, that was a game changer. So let's say I'm working on a theme. I can define certain standards and structure or even constraints on how I want the AI to work in that theme context. Because let's face it, building a theme is not the same as building a plugin. And the same goes for plugins. I can drop into my plugins folder, spin up a Claude markdown file, and define all the logic, expectations, and even outline the plugin specific tasks. And you can take it another step further by going into each individual plugin subfolder and creating a markdown file scoped just for that plugin. Now, this is where it gets really powerful. You're essentially writing a mini PRD or a project requirement document directly inside the folder where the code base is going to be written. Now, you're guiding the AI with structure so it's not guessing, it's working with purpose. So today, just as an experiment, I'm going to show you two ways of coding a plugin. First, we'll use the traditional procedural way using standard WordPress hooks and filters. Then I'll show you an object oriented way, which uses a plugin boilerplate that I always use. So let's dive in. OK, so I've got a basic WordPress installation here. Nothing unusual. It's just a straightforward local site called Claude Code, and it's for demonstration purposes and it's also running on my local Valley environment. So first thing I'm gonna do is to show you the prompt file, a WordPress plugin that basically displays a customizable header notice for site visitors with the following specifications. So I've kept the description generic, but there are some specific requirements that I do want. So I want the markup to be loaded right before the closing body tag, so it doesn't interfere with any of the normal page markup. And so for that reason, it should be absolutely positioned. So again, that's in the specification. Now this is designed for scenarios like maybe a shop or a school or a library wanting to announce something on their website, maybe a closure or not open for business on a certain day. Now this also has an expiration date feature so that the notice can automatically disappear after a set date and time. The styling is user selectable 
So I've got a general, which is white text on a green background, a warning, which is white text on a black background, error, which is yellow text on a red background. Now the prompt gives all the context needed to build the plugin in two ways, one for procedural and one for object oriented. I've also stipulated that only administrators or anyone with the manage options capability can manage it. So on the admin side, the notice must have a title, which is a requirement. So that might be shop closed or library closed, and then subtitle. I've actually called it subtitle, but probably it should be called subtext. And that will just show the details of why the shop might be closed or the library might be closed. Then there's the expiration date and time. And I've also added an enable disable toggle for switching notices on and off so that they can be used periodically. Now it's a comprehensive markdown file that defines the exact criteria I want to apply to each plugin build prompt. Now I've already created two plugin folders in my plugins directory, one for the procedural with a markdown file that specifies the traditional WordPress procedural patterns using hooks and filters, and one for object-oriented programming with a markdown file specifying an object-oriented build using a WordPress plugin boilerplate that I use. And I'd leave this link in the description below, but it's WPPBME, which is WordPress plugin boilerplate. For the procedural version, I've been explicit about using standard WordPress hooks and filters, keeping functions small and focused, and structuring assets logically. And for the OOP or the object oriented version, I've detailed the boilerplate structure, a main plugin class loader, a loader class to manage all the hooks, an internationalization class for the translations, activation and deactivation classes, which use the standard WordPress activate and deactivate hooks. And this can be used for handling any database cleanup as well. And there are separate classes for the admin logic and the public facing logic, which is a typical object oriented programming pattern. If you're not familiar with object oriented programming, the idea is to break all of the logic into smaller manageable chunks inside classes and methods, each with clear responsibilities that match the boilerplate approach perfectly. Now for the first experiment, I'm not going to initialize Claude at all. I just want to see what happens if I ask the AI to create a basic plugin with no context. So a quick check, I'm in the root folder. Yes, I don't know why I do that, but I always do. So let's fire up Claude. And to do that, you just type Claude and that launches the app and puts me into the Claude environment for this session. So I'm simply gonna prompt, generate a basic WordPress plugin starter template. Remember, I'm in the root folder and I'm giving it zero extra context. And this is me deliberately setting it up to get things wrong because I'm sure a lot of people try this and expect perfect results, which you're not gonna get. Now, sometimes Claude will stop midway through to confirm actions before continuing, and you can bypass that with the accept edits mode. And it's done. So the plugin's been created, but sure enough, it's in the root folder and it's not in the plugins folder where it should be. And again, that's on me. I didn't provide enough context, but I did that on purpose. I can also see some obvious gaps. For instance, the author name is missing and it hasn't applied any WordPress coding standards. And I can tell straight away because the WordPress coding standards should have spaces between parentheses and curly braces and that hasn't been done. It has, however, included a security check to stop direct access to the plugin file, which is good. We've got some constant definitions that would be used throughout the plugin, and it's wrapped everything in a class. So it's defaulted to object-oriented, even though I never asked for that to happen. So scrolling down, it's added some settings, which is fine. But overall, this is just a very basic plugin template. And one thing I noticed it's got a constant for the plugin URL, and then it's referencing an assets folder. Now the problem is because the plugin was generated in the root folder, there is no assets folder, and that's gonna cause an issue. So when it tries to enqueue scripts, those scripts won't exist and the plugin will fail immediately. So I'm not even gonna bother testing this version. I'm just gonna delete it and start again. Right, so let's do it properly. So this time we'll call Claude 
using a more efficient way. So first, I'm gonna reset and clear the Claude session, so we're starting from fresh. I'll open up a new terminal session, check that I'm in the root folder, and put my project level markdown file in place. Now this root file tells Claude all of the key details for my WordPress installation. The minimum PHP version that's required by WordPress, my MySQL setup, even down to my local development environment, which is Valet running on Nginx. And also I'm using PHP version 8.1. And I've specified some logging requirements. Basically, this gives Claude the full picture before it touches any code. Now I'll initialize Claude with the init, and by doing this, it's gonna update my Claude markdown file so that the future Claude session now knows the project purpose and its requirements. So first, the procedural build. I'll CD into the procedural plugin folder. I'm gonna initialize Claude again in a new session. Then I'm going to drop him my detailed prompt. And this prompt contains all of the requirements we talked about earlier. So all I need to do is to make the request and reference the prompt. So Claude is asking for permissions to read files and create directories. I'll approve those and it gets to work. So when it's done, the output looks good. Coding standards have been applied. I can see spaces where they should be between braces. There's a security check at the top. Constants have been defined for reuse. There's an activation and deactivation hook in place. Default options for enable, disable, a title, subtext, the type and the expiration time and date, which is a standard default array. So it looks like the logic has been split across files in an includes folder. There's a functions file. There's an assets folder with separate admin and front end CSS. And as you can see, everything has been written in a procedural way, exactly as requested. So now let's test it quickly. So if I pop over to Firefox and I'm logged into my site, I can go to the plugins and activate the header notice procedural. We have no errors, which is a good sign. So now if I go into the settings, I should have a header notice, which I do. So all the fields are there. I can add a test notice. I'll leave the color selection or the type as green. Now I'm gonna set the expiry date to tomorrow at 1 p.m. and hit save. And it's also given me a little preview that works. And if I pop back to the front end to test this, there's a slight animation and it's showing as expected, perfect. Okay, so now the object oriented version. So I'll deactivate the procedural plugin, close that session and CD into the header notice OOP folder. So here I can initialize Claude again. And again, I'm just gonna ask a basic prompt to build this plugin and reference my prompt. So I'm going to load this thing and we'll be back in a few seconds. So when it's done, we can check out the main file and I can see clearly that the coding standards have been applied straight away. The full WordPress plugin boilerplate structure is in place. I can see that because I'm familiar with it. There's an activation hook calling the activate method on this class. There's a loader class to register hooks for both admin and public. There are separate classes for the admin and public logic, and all the classes are neatly organized in the includes folder. So a quick check shows exactly how the plugin boilerplate expects things to be structured. And in fact, this pattern follows the boilerplate exactly, so it's perfect. So we can run a quick test to activate this plugin and to see if it all works. 
and everything seems to work perfectly so I'm quite pleased with that and that's probably the option I would go with the object oriented version. So there you have it. That's how you can leverage Claude code and Markdown files to create your perfect WordPress AI builder. But remember, never fully trust AI generated code. Always run your own review. And if you spot anything, especially if it's a security issue, point it out to the AI because nine times out of 10, it will agree with you and it will fix it. That's the beauty of using AI as an assistant and not as a replacement. So for now, thanks for watching this demo. If you've enjoyed it, please do consider subscribing as it really helps me to grow the channel. And if you've got any questions, do drop them in the comments below and I'll do my very best to get back to you as soon as possible. And while you're here, please do give the video a thumbs up as it lets YouTube know that it was worth your time watching. Until next time, thanks for watching.